In today's video, set point theory and maintaining fat loss. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and thank you for tuning in for today's video. Today we're going to talk about the topic of set point theory and how it impacts our body over the life cycle of gaining weight and losing weight, how to put weight on, how to take it off. And I've actually got some interesting information at the end of the video about a study that was done on an individual in a hospital setting. So some really reliable information. Before we get into that, Today's question comes from my Instagram. So check out my Instagram, and if you wanna send me a question, just send me a direct message. I'll screenshot it, I'll use it here when the time is right. So thank you for all the great questions, and please, if you guys would, click that subscribe button. I really love new subscribers, it really makes my day. It makes putting these videos out very worth it. So, let's talk a little bit about body fat set point theory, what it might be, what it probably is, how we can work with it along our journey. So the theory basically goes like this. We each have a genetic makeup that says we are going to be around a certain amount of body weight, a certain amount of body fat, and a certain amount of lean body mass. And anytime we get outside of that norm, our body is going to work to bring us back. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, it means something totally different than it does for me. You see, we all have individual differences that make up our wonderful world. So if you see people walking down the street that are tall and thin, short and chubby, well, they likely have very genetic differences, very, very big genetic differences. And so it can be difficult to work to get outside of that. Now, I come from the background of growing up very, very thin, very tall and lanky. And so I've worked very hard to put on muscle, to put on lean body mass, to, to bring up my body mass to a higher level. My body weight prefers to settle. I often struggle to eat when I get to a certain body weight. So I find that this to be very true for me. Now, what I've done that's a little different than most people is I have dieted down to very, very lean body weights. Body weights that would be considered probably unhealthy, but then again, I compete so I know what I'm doing. I go through it with the knowledge that I'm going to come out of it. I've done it multiple times. So I've probably experienced both sides of the spectrum, meaning I've gained weight with the intention of putting on muscle and I've found it very, very difficult to maintain that higher calorie approach and eventually my weight would come back down. Likewise, I have dieted on very low calories for myself. I have done lots of cardio and I have gotten under 10% body fat, probably close to the 5% range. And likewise, after that period was over, seen my weight come back up. I've also worked with many clients, some who are competitors, some who are lifestyle clients. So I have a sense of what goes on. And I definitely agree that there is some type of set point theory that is going on. I think the biggest factor when it comes to set point theory is probably leptin. What does leptin do? Leptin is sometimes called the satiety hormone. It helps inhibit hunger and regulate energy balance. So the body does not trigger hunger responses when it does not need energy. However, when levels of the hormone fall, which happen when an individual loses weight, the lower levels can trigger huge increases in appetite and food cravings, thus in turn can make weight loss more difficult. So when we have a bit more body fat, leptin levels are higher. Therefore, we are not as hungry. And when our fat levels are lower, leptin is lower, making ourselves hungrier. Everybody knows that when you go through a fat loss phase, you can expect what? to be hungrier. Well, I've experienced the opposite of that spectrum, and I've been told by many of my clients when we're trying to eat more during a building phase, when we're trying to add muscle, that they are full all the time. They are constantly full. Well, this is because they have a little bit more body fat. So this is our body's mechanism, and I think there's some interesting thoughts here. So when we get to the end of this video, you can check out the, the documentary where this doctor took a lady through a nine-month 
40 pound fat loss phase, right? And they kept her basically in a metabolic ward in a hospital setting, tracked her activity, tracked her calories. They had to put her on 800 calories for an extended period of time to get her to lose the 40 pounds. What they told her at the end was to maintain that weight, she would have to eat 500 calories a day. Now, what they did was they gave her some leptin shots. These leptin shots helped decrease her hunger. Now, this is not something that is currently available for, for normal everyday use. I think it's a very expensive idea um, currently, but it's something that could help in the future as adding a leptin shot into a low fat person's um, daily regimen might help regulate their hunger, especially if obesity is a problem. It's, it could potentially be a way to kind of help with the hunger issue. I think that's the biggest issue is because hunger can actually become psychological. Any of us that have dieted and lost weight, you know that eating can therefore become kind of involuntary. And this is why I think the set point is very valid. Now, how do we change our set point? Well, I think for some people, changing your set point is always going to be work. It is always going to be a struggle to, to keep weight off. Some people are just meant to be a little bit heavier. For that person, making sure you keep a healthy lifestyle, making sure you keep foods around the house that are in high volume, they're gonna help you avoid overeating on calorie, calorie dense foods, is probably gonna be the most important part. You're gonna have to really pay attention to things for the rest of your life. Those that are like thin natured, like I would consider myself, we probably don't have to work as hard to stay thin, but I certainly have to work very hard if I want to gain weight or put weight on. I just don't find when I'm in my happy place that I get very hungry. I have to consciously focus on eating, but I'm an amateur competitive bodybuilder, so that is my sport, that is something I enjoy, and perhaps the psychology of that has to do with the fact that I was so thin growing up. Likewise, if someone was heavy set growing up, they might desire to be thinner. I think this is always something that we're doing. We're looking at other people that have traits that we desire because they're different from us. This is just a personality trait that many of us have. I was always very impressed by very muscular physiques and I still am to this day. So that's just something I strive for. So if you've been several hundred pounds overweight, and had surgeries like bariatric surgeries or liposuction, your body is still probably going to fight you along the way. You know, I know the, the weight loss numbers are staggering for the amount of people that lose weight and then regain it. It is not easy. It is never going to be a simple process. And resetting your set point is something that is probably only gonna be able to be done in a minimal range. However, if you were very, very obese or very, very thin, I think both of those places are places our bodies do not wanna be, and that we can eventually find a nice, happy place. You're likely never gonna really love where you're at. I've been lifting weights for 25 years, I've been tracking my diet for the last 11, and I can tell you, I'm still constantly battling myself on where I wanna go and what I wanna do. So that's it for me, guys. But I would really like you to check out this documentary. If you were light, you meant the opposite of that. The laws of physics relate to the regulation of body weight. Energy in, energy out. If you are taking even slight excess of energy in versus what you're expending, you will gradually put on weight. We now know, based on... 25, 30 years of research that body weight is as tightly regulated in many ways as things like blood sugar, blood pressure, how much sodium is in your blood, and a variety of other very complex metabolic characteristics. If you compare the metabolism... I'm going to put a little clip of it here in the video, and I'm also going to put it in the description box below. I think you'll find it very interesting what this doctor was doing with this lady and uh, some of her thoughts when she came out of the hospital. Immediately noticing all the food around her sounded a lot to me like how I felt when contest prep was over, noticing all the foods that I could have now. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you for the great questions, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.